Introducing Spotify. A world of music. You search, you find. You discover old favourites. You play, you share. Favourites you didn't even know existed. Whatever you want. Whenever you want. Instant, simple and free. More people are listening to more music than ever before from a bigger diversity of artists and genres. And music streaming companies like Napster, Apple, and Spotify have played a huge role in this change. But these were not the first platforms for music consumption. Music has a very deep history in human civilization and culture. And although music has stayed here for so long, the platforms for its consumption have changed over the past few decades. First came phonographs, then the gramophone, the vinyl records, the transistor radio, the cassettes, the compact discs, the iPod, Walkman, television, MTV, Napster, Aris, uTorrent, iTunes, YouTube, Apple Music, and Spotify. So in today's video, let's see how two tech geeks from Norway started Spotify and changed the way people consume music, how it disrupted the music streaming business, and how it continues to carry on the cultural heritage that humans have accumulated over the past. Money is the root of all evil, funny how it feeds my people, we ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money and defeat you, Money is the root of all evil What? Funny how it feeds my people yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals Until we get the money, spend the money in the future Spotify was founded by Daniel Ek and Martin Lorenzen in Stockholm, Sweden in 2006. Spotify founder and CEO Daniel Ek started playing guitar at four years old and got a computer when he was five. He started playing games and then eventually got bored. Then he learned C++ on his own by reading and started to make games. His passion for programming grew with his age and he learned to make websites at a time when everyone wanted to get one. Luckily, he got one client and then got referred to more clients. Eventually, he started charging $5,000 per website to help expand the business. Eck recruited students from his class to work on the websites from the school computer lab by bribing them with video games. Eck went to university but dropped out later to continue his ventures. Once, Eck also applied to Google and got rejected because he did not have a university degree. He thought he would make a better search engine, but could not make it. Daniel Eck worked in a senior role at an online commerce company called Tradera. After Tradera served as CTO of Stardoll, then he started an ad tech company, Advertigo, which was sold in 2006 to Trade Doubler. Daniel also worked as the CEO of uTorrent before starting up Spotify. Spotify co-founder Martin Lorenzen founded NetStrategy in 1999, which later became Trade Doubler, a leading European marketplace. Trade Doubler brought Daniel X advertising company at Vertigo in March 2006, and that's how these two geniuses met each other. Daniel was a big fan of Napster and saw that people really liked Napster and realized the only problem with Napster was their broken business model. He saw that as an opportunity to solve the streaming side of the music business. The founders were naive and didn't know anything about the music business, but Eck researched and found out that they could get the music license from collecting societies in about six months in exchange for 5 to 10% of their revenue. They thought the whole process of the rights collection and licensing would be easy and simple. So the founders met Fred Davis. Fred Davis is a music industry insider who had a lot of contacts in the music industry. Fred told them that it's not going to be as easy as they thought and they needed to go and do deals with people individually and introduce them with some of the industry people. Daniel flew to New York and did some meetings with the major labels and big indie artists. Everyone he met liked the idea and was ready to work with him. So basically, 
He got a very welcoming response. The founders then started to make the product. Their goal was to test the product and get as much response as they could. They decided to go to Bootstrap Spotify, so they invested $10 million of their own money in the development. A few months later, Spotify was a team of about 50 people. The founders had a lot of responsibility, and every team member believed in their vision. In an interview, Daniel told that they made a mistake by not telling the team that the licensing had not been finalized, and if things would have not worked in their favor, the founding team would have felt betrayed and the consequences would have been worse. But he also mentioned that it is also important for every founder to find the right balance about being transparent about the important insights because revealing everything could be a huge burden for the team. Things were going good, but the founders have also seen some dark days. The founders kept telling the team that they will figure out the licensing later on. Figuring out the licensing and copyrights was their biggest hurdle. And then came the day when Daniel was in New York with the label and every label rejected putting their music on Spotify and asked him not to come back. The founders gave themselves a few weeks to try and turn things and find a way to crack the licensing deals. Daniel did not give up and started meeting more and more industry people. He tried tons of ways to convince people, but after a lot of hit and trial and failures, they thought of changing their game plan. Spotify's goal was to go global since day one, but they could not see that happening, so they changed their plan and thought that they could convince record labels if they could prove the product and business model in a few countries in Europe where they would get the licensing. And that changed a lot of things for Spotify. They launched on October 7, 2008, and the company initially limited the sign-up for free services by making it invite-only. Paid subscriptions were also made available, but despite this, Spotify reported a 4.4 million loss in 2008. In 2009, they started to test their freemium model. That's also when Spotify launched on Apple App Store and continued to grow. In 2009, Spotify won the public backing of Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, who posted, Spotify is so good, which made Spotify popular to the U.S. audience. Some people in the U.S. started using Spotify before it was even launched there through VPN services. In 2011, the company raised $100 million, which they used to launch into the United States, and Sean Parker, the co-founder file-sharing site Napster, was brought on board to secure relationships with the major record labels. In 2012, the company launched its service on Android smartphones. Today, Spotify works based on the freemium business model approach. According to this model, there are certain services that are free, while other services are paid. Spotify earns through premium subscriptions. Its premium plan costs $10 in USA and ranges from $2 to $15 around the world. It also earns revenue by selling ad space on its non-premium streaming service. Spotify was listed on the New York Stock Exchange on April 3rd, 2018, with an opening price of 165 US dollars, which was 25.7% higher than the New York Stock Exchange reference price. Today, Spotify has a market value of about 21 billion, and Eck himself has an estimated net worth of nearly 2 billion. According to Spotify's 2020 QI report, the platform has 320 million monthly active users, of which 144 million are Spotify premium subscribers. Spotify pays up to 0.00437 per stream to the artist, so this means that it offers $1 for a total of 229 streams, but Spotify has also faced opposition from many artists who sees the platform as an unwanted middleman. Artists like Tom York, Taylor Swift, David Byrne have been vocal against Spotify. While some artists feel the payouts they receive from Spotify are inadequate, others feel that the platform is not supportive enough for emerging artists. In 2015, the infamous pop singer Taylor Swift removed her music from Spotify, but added it back in 2017. Spotify invests a lot of research and development to make its products Spotify better and better, and it's been acquiring a lot of companies from the very beginning for the same. In fact, their tech is one of the primary reasons why they are winning the streaming game. 
Spotify suggests new songs to users based on the songs they listen to, and their suggestions are pretty accurate because of their genius data analysts and the scientists to predict accurately which songs users would like. They curate new tracks with previously liked tracks in their daily mix playlists, discover weekly playlists, and other playlists. Although Spotify was leading in the music streaming race in the past few years, they've pivoted from a music streaming app to an audio streaming app. Spotify is investing a lot in producing podcasts and has been signing off a lot of famous podcasters like Joe Rogan and Michelle Obama to attract more users to its platform. So this was the story of Spotify. Spotify has definitely changed our audio experience and has made music very accessible and easy. Unlike the 1990s, when people used to listen to only specific genres and specific artists, now music is easily accessible. And people are really listening to more music than ever from more diverse genres and artists. We hope you liked our video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, share with your friends, and watch our other videos. This is Carissa from Crew, signing off.